make their way to the house of God. Okay, I thank you for your faithfulness, despite what's happening out there. You're here this morning, not because of the rain, but because I believe you're here to worship God. Amen. And, uh, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that this morning. God is good. All the time. All the time. And despite what's happening out there, let's hear what God is doing in your lives. Anyone got a testimony? Morning, church. Morning. Look, I, I went to a funeral uh, on uh, Thursday, and um, there was two things that this uh, lady who passed away had, um, had actually spoken to my wife about. One of them that she, she cooked this what we call Ewana bread. Yeah. Not this one from back in the state, not that one. <laughs> uh, She's she well known for her cooking, especially around bread. The second thing is that she was deaf. She couldn't hear very properly. But even though she was deaf, and I was uh, at the Marae just sharing with the people, even though she was deaf, yet she heard the voice of God. Yes. And she gave her life to Christ. Amen. And you know, a lot of us can hear. But yet we don't give our life to Christ. And that was a blessing for me. You now it's good to go to a funeral when you know where people have gone. Very easy to speak on. But when you don't know where they're gone, you've got to play it safe. But I think the, the blessing for me was, although the, although she couldn't hear properly, yet she heard the voice of God. Amen. And hearing that voice, she responded and gave her life to Christ. And that was a blessing for me.
You've got to lift your gaze. You've got to be better. You know, it can do things to your mind. It can make you doubt how good you are as a person. And, 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 and my, in my work as a, as a nurse, and you see, it's in those times of doubt and worry and fear, we have to come back to God's Word. God's Word speaks over our life. He speaks goodness and mercy and grace. And he says, you know, it was a, such a blessing to me in Psalm 5, 11. But let all those rejoice who put their trust in you, O Lord. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Have your Bibles turn with me to the old book, or the book of the Old Testament, sorry, Deuteronomy, chapter 5, and background scriptures, we're not going to read the background scriptures, but from verses 22 to 33, just going to read two verses, and that's 32 and 33. Deuteronomy 5, 32 and 33. So be careful to do what the Lord your God has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. Walk in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. Father, we thank you this morning for the scriptures, the truth that is contained in your word, the message that you have for the church through your word. May we hear what you are saying to the church and to us as your people today. May the word as we hear your word, obey your word, that it will strengthen, cause us to grow and mature and to be the people that you call us to be. You are a holy God and you have made no secret about the fact that you're calling your people to be holy unto yourself. You created a holy nation of people. Yet in their disobedience they wandered and disobeyed you. <coughs> and you brought punishment upon them. But yet, Father God, in your love you relented as your people also cried out to you. So bless your word. Yes. Strengthen your word. As we look at this today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Deuteronomy 5 is the giving of the Ten Commandments given to Moses and to the nation of Israel on Mount, Mount Sinai. And it served many purposes, um, but mainly, and I've just taken this one, or these couple of purposes, it served the the purposes of revealing to us God's nature and of course we know that God is holy and His law is holy and when the nation of Israel saw these standards or these laws that God required then they fully understood that if they deviated from those laws if they disobeyed those laws it was sin in the sight of God or in the eyes of God and also that they would consider it to be sin too. So the giving of the law or the commands was also to reveal the nature of God unto his people and of course to be obeyed. Today the message is centered around the text or those two verses that 
we have just read, and the title is this, simply obedience. God gave the law, because we know we can't fully obey all the laws, but we still have to walk in obedience to the commands that God gives us. And so the title of the message is Obedience. Obedience unto God and the things of God. There are two areas that I want to look at today. And firstly, that's the commands that God gives us, or uh, some of the commands that God gave us in these verses. And secondly, the promises or the outcomes of those commands as the, as the people obey those commands. The first of the commands, uh, starting in verse 32, was to observe God's word. Therefore, the encouragement was that the nation was to be careful to do what the Lord God had commanded them. For every true believer today, and this is my opinion, and, I, and I'll stick by it, it is, it is um, the commands of God and the words of God are simply to be obeyed. You know, sometimes we may think it's uh, overwhelming or we may think it's too much or it's rules and regulations, but you know, faith causes us, our faith causes us not to question, but to simple obedience. So we're to observe the words of God. We're to be mindful of what God calls us to do. Why is that, you may ask? Because God knows best. That's, it's simple, isn't it? God knows best. And He knows me and He knows you like nobody else does. Why? Because He created us. And, and therefore what God calls us to, it just makes sense that we heed what He has to say and we observe what He says and we obey what God says. Amen? Amen. And our faith is, or our faith calls us to a life of obedience and trust in God. That's what God has called us to. Oops, I just lost my lens. One of a life of obedience, observance of the Word of God. How important is it that we observe what God said to says to us? And you know, at times we often pick what we think that we we need to do and obey and walk therein. And there are things that we say, "Oh, that's too hard." I think especially about the, the, the folk that did the holiness course this week. I've seen a lot of people come to the church, not just this particular church, but every holiness church that preaches holiness and, and they walk out of the church and they say, oh, that's too hard. But I want to tell you, if God calls us to a life of holiness, then, then you know, it must be possible. Yes. He, he will enable us. All we need to do is walk in faith and trust in God. Amen. Observe what He has for us. His commands and, and His words. Can we go wrong? Can anyone go wrong? When we are walking in obedience and when we are walking in faith with God, can we go wrong? Can our, our advice be wrong? Can anything we do for other people be wrong? No, it can't because God is with us and we are walking in obedience to what God is saying to us. It's when we walk outside of that that, that things happen in our lives. <coughs> when we walk away and we do not observe what God is saying to us. Because I know for a fact that God speaks to all of us. And I know for a fact there are times in your life when, when you know that God has spoken to you and you've walked away from what God has said. Why? Because, you know, in our humanness we think we know better. Why do I say that? Because I've often done that. I've often walked away and did 
what I believe was right and found and I've messed it up and I come back with the broken pieces and I say, God, help me, forgive me. But if we continue to observe what the, the first um, command is saying, observe the word of God. Every true believer, it is said, indispensable part of our faith that we walk in obedience to the Word of God. Okay. Secondly, stay on the straight and narrow. Verse still verse 32. Mm -hmm. The next command is to stay on the straight and narrow. That, and the verse reads, and do not turn from the right nor to the left. The nation was encouraged not to deviate, not to turn to the right or to the left, but they were to stay focused on His commands. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to do. We know that the world is full of, of uh, all kinds of truths, what they believe is truths and, 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 and good things, but it, we, we should not deviate from what we know and, and believe to be the Word of God. We stand by the Word of God. Amen? Amen. We live by the Word of God. We do not deviate from the Word of God. We don't turn to the left nor to the right. If you want to know something, get into the Word of God. Sister Carol had the Bible sticking up there. That's so true. We are to be led in, uh, by the Word of God. The truth of God's Word. And not deviate from that. It's when we start the, this deviation from the left to the right that we, we sometimes we go wrong. And we end up wondering, oh, where did I go wrong? I took a wrong turn. Uh, I tell you what, backtrack is the best way. Backtrack. Where's my lens? <laughs> Sorry, I've broken my glass. I've got one lens. And it's a bit um, starry. I can't see it. Where's my wife? We should look at a spare set of glasses. Sorry, it's, it's the whole thing's broken. Two dollar glasses. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Give it away. Thank you. So stay in the straight and narrow. Don't deviate from what you know is the truth of God's word. I know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. The devil will come and say, no. I know that the Lord is coming again. Hallelujah. Soon. Hallelujah. That's the truth of God's word. I don't deviate that. If they say that he's over here, if they say he's over there. No, the Bible says no man knows the time, nor day, nor the hour that he's coming. That's what we don't deviate from. We stay true and we stay focused on what we know is the word of God. Amen. Amen. Next one. Walk in God. That's, there's only three that I know. Walk in God. What does that mean? What does it imply? It implies that our life and living, our walk is in God, one of, one, one of obedience, when we walk with God and God in us, yes. is in us. So our lives are lived for God. Amen. And, we've re and we read, we've read, so. We can read and we've read stories of men and women who walk with God. Yes. And that's what we call to a life of walk yes. in God. A life of living our life. What, what is the most important thing in our life? What is number one? And that should be Jesus. God. God. Jesus. Now walk with Him. Jesus Christ. God present with us. It's a way of living. It's a lifestyle. The Israelites was to live in a certain way. A life of obedience unto God. Who's in these glasses? They're quite nice. Thank you, brother. <laughs> So we have those commands that to observe God's word, to stay on the straight and narrow, 
and to walk in God, our lives in Him. And then there comes the promise. And here's the part that I love the most. The promise. And the first part of that, verse 33, is life. Living. That we might live. If Israel was to deviate from God's command, that, that was considered a sin. And of course we know that the consequences of sin led to death. But to obey God meant life. Life is opposed to death, to a death sentence. Eternal life is opposed to an everlasting life, as opposed to punishment and torment. That's the first promise that we shall receive as we walk in obedience to the commands of God, is that we receive life over death. Amen. Amen? Over Amen. the sentence of death. And you're not living, I say this often, until you have faith and trust in God. That's life. You're not living until you acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ Amen. in your life. That's life. And that's what's promised to us. And what God promises to us, nobody can take it away from you. You can give it away. But no one can take it away from you. What God promises to His people, no one can take that away. The second thing there, or the second promise, is, well, that it may go well with you. Well, I want to ask you, well, it's all well. <laughs> it's all well with you. Is it okay? My wife quite often in these latter years of my life says, Are you well? And I would say, Are you well? Are you alright? Are you okay? Are you good? You see, you extend that to say, Are you fulfilled? Are you at peace? Is everything all right with you? Is it well with your soul? You know the song? It is well. It is well with my soul. And I used to say, and I still will say, if it's not well with your soul, then don't sing it because you're telling a lie. But if it is well, if all's well, if it's good with you, if you're at peace, if life is fulfilled, are you prosperous is another word, is things blessed in your life and going as well as it could be, then praise God and sing the song. Raise the hands and say hallelujah, thank you Jesus, despite the weather, despite whatever's going around me, despite the gout, despite the pain and the misery, Despite the fears and the phobias, guess what? The other day I woke up with this intense fear about flying. I had to ask my wife to pray for me. Because in the middle of my dream, I, I, I was afraid because I suffer from claustrophobia. That is, I can't. And it came on when I watched those kids coming out of that cave. Those narrow passages, and, and, and I imagined myself being in there at this size. And then this overwhelming fear, and the devil came in and did his part. And it was so overwhelming. If not for the grace of God and the, and the love of God, where would I be today? In a nut farm somewhere. Overcome and overrun by my fears and phobias, frustrations and hurt. Is it well with your soul today? God promises that all will be well and good for you. And finally, verse, the last part of that verse, protection, is a summary. 
that you may prosper and prolong your days in the land that you shall possess. Hallelujah. Amen. The promise of protection. Yes. The promise of longevity. Mm -hmm. The promise of um, prosperity. Mm -hmm. The promise of everything that you put your hand to, you will succeed and do well. Well, not thou. Well and victorious. Amen. Amen. It's not a dream. It's a reality. When I talk about this fulfillment and this joy and the peace, it is reality. It's calmness in the midst of the storm. It's peace knowing that there's strife all around you. It's being content when you've got nothing. You know? Those times when you open your wallet up and say, oh, I've got nothing money. And you begin to worry. Nothing money. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that i got nothing money. i never had any. So there's nothing, no need to worry about it. But you know what I'm saying? When you got nothing, Paul knew what it was to be content and to have nothing. He, he saw it, those things as rubbish, as dumb, in light of what he was to receive, the crown, and to know Jesus, Amen. those things he counted more important. And here's the promise of possessing the land. Where you live, where you dwell, where you are, you're a blessing. Not only will you see blessing, but you are a blessing. Did you know that everyone in Christ Jesus is a blessing to others? Did you know that? Blessed to be blessed. We're not blessed so we can say hallelujah and keep to ourselves. We don't receive this light so we can hide it. We receive the blessing and the light so that we can spread it out. We receive the love of God, not that so we can hog it within ourselves, but that we can love the world and the world know what it is to love. Yes. Amen. It's, we don't do that unto ourselves. And so we are blessed. Finally, I want to read that verse. Those two verses in closing. So be careful, was the word. Do what the Lord your God has commanded you to do. God is commanding us, and you know that there are things that God has called you to do. Right? Do not turn aside, don't deviate from them to the right nor to the left. Walk in obedience. To all the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live, amen, amen. and prosper, and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. Us. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you this morning for reminding your people of yourself, the very nature of God, and who you are, the God of love and mercy and holiness. And that we're to walk in obedience to your laws. And as we do so, there are the many, many promises that is contained throughout your word to those who walk in obedience to you, Father God. We have not because we ask not. We are asking this morning, Father God, we are asking today to forgive us and to help us, Lord, to open up our ears and our hearts and minds to what we believe and know that what you're calling us to. Yes. Not calling us to be heroes, simply to put our faith and trust in you. It's not about the money that we have. He's not calling us to get our money off us. He's calling us to give our lives to him. Amen. Jesus gave his life for us. He laid down his life as a sacrifice for sin. And in return, we lay down our lives in surrender unto the Lordship 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your people this morning. Give them the power and the strength and encouragement to walk with God, to walk in God, and God in them. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please stand as Brother Henry leads us in our closing chorus.
Thank you. 